All right, folks. So you guys can see what we're talking about, about locations and, and finding good ones. We're on a little creek. It's called the um, Silver Creek in Saunders County. Just so you see a little intro here, what it is. And these creeks are called, or these bridges are just funnels. So we're going to go over here to this bridge and I'm going to show you what we're looking for for trapping locations. Every bridge you come to, you'll have a high bank trail, which is right here, going down. If you can see it, going down here. And if you look real close, you'll see Mr. Raccoon waiting in a snare for me. They'll also have one that goes under the bridge. You can see it where that coon is, comes down, and it follows along the edge of the bridge. We can get down there and show you that in a second. And if we look real close in the water, following along here, you'll see the little foot tracks right along the edge of the creek. If I can zoom in and the glare isn't too bad. So if we're going to catch every coon that comes through here, because when we trap, we trap so we can't miss an animal, not to catch one animal. So we're going to need the water covered, which we got down here. I got a couple pocket sets and blind sets along the water. We got the trail covered over here where we snagged that coon in that snare and <clears throat> since these trails meet together one goes up the up the bank and one goes underneath the bridge we got the coon locked down over there so we got the water covered so if they're coming up the creek and we got the trails where before they branch off to go under the bridge and up over the road so with that being said, we're going to go dispatch the coon, get him on the other side, and uh, I'll set up the tripod so you can see what I mean when I set up my snares. Alright folks, we're down here with our coon that we caught in the snare. As you can see, he's not in any pain, he's not trying to bite anybody. <clears throat> Coons are chewers, so if you give them some sticks or something to chew on, they'll chew on that just to pass time. Um, you can see the trail. If we can zoom in on it here, right up there it comes down. We got him in this snare, the trail keeps going. I caught a coon in that snare a couple days ago. It goes up to the high bank to the truck. So we're going to get him switched over to the other side and uh, I'll explain how we set up a coon snare so it catches our coon. Alright, we got a coon down and out up there. We're going to show you guys how to set up a coon snare, or at least how I do it. We cut the coon out of the snare. It was well swiveled. Uh, it's been up a little bit, but you can see it's not bird nest at the other end. I talked about swivels on the podcast, so <clears throat> we're going to go grab our supplies that we need to, uh, to do this. we got our wire right here. This is a support wire. Here's our new coon snare. Let's feed this through the snare. This one was unhooked from another one. Now the reason I like this setup compared to other setups I've seen is like I said I don't like um, killing the coon with the snare. So when the coon gets caught he could roll with the barreled swivel and he can go around and around and he don't get tangled up. 
we have the trail going right through here as you can see this acts as a natural blocking the coon isn't going to go out of his way to go around here he's going to go where it's easiest to walk so we open up the loop put the support wire on kind of massage this loop it's towards the end of the season they're getting a little bit decrepit here open that up just a little bit more we want the loop kind of square with the trail to kind of fence this in a little bit we'll just throw a stick to to block it so it makes more sense for him to go through here <clears throat> and what I like to do and I haven't seen anybody else will show this on a video is go get some grass you got a big old clump of grass here fold it and if you twist it a few times it maintains its shape pretty well then I take little zip strips and I zip strip it around my support collar and by doing this it pretty much completely camos my lock and my uh, my shiny stuff that holds the the snare in place we'll put this stick back up here kind of fence them in a little bit so when you're looking at that snare on the trail it really doesn't look like much of anything unnatural Put this over here So the, kid, the coon's going to duck his head to go underneath this pile of stuff we got. We're off the ground. He's just going to wander right through it. If we really want to get touchy for coon, we wouldn't want to do this for too many other animals. Really fence them down a little bit. And uh, since we got some opening over here and we got some dead sticks laying here, <coughs> we don't need a lot of brushing but a little bit of brushing never hurts so if we just kind of throw it in there the trail is right here he's going to walk through that and get caught it's as simple as that so we're going to take the camera off the tripod and we're going to go walk down this coon trail here coons you can see it they got it bare mud right there you can see the trail Walks down nice and faint. Coon walks around here. Remember it's dark when he's doing this. And he walks through that little loop. And you can see in the video camera, zoomed in, he's really got to, got to work to not go through that snare. It'd be harder for him not to go through that snare than through it. And all of that took is one two cent zip strip a uh, little grass rolled up in a in a bet in a roll and we got him uh we got him anchored in the trail so that's how i run my snares that's how i set them up with the pole set up it's just so much quicker so i don't have to worry about him getting them entangled and uh i hope you learned something i'm gonna go up the trail away because coons usually don't run just one coon. They mostly have a couple of them they go with. So I'll put a snare on that one and hopefully by the end of the week we'll catch a couple more out of here. This will be the third or fourth coon I caught just on this little trail. Um, we'll go up here a little bit more. Another reason we put two snares on the trails is so if we catch one or if a coon knocks it down and gets out of a snare we can we can catch him on the second one there's the trail going up then it branches off right here I mean you could you could kinda see it in the thing goes along here see how it goes underneath that brush if we get way down here 
That's just a little coon hole right there. I can zoom out. That's what we're looking for. So if I was going to snare, or if I could snare in Nebraska that close to the bridge, I'd put my, my snare pole off to the right, move my support wire down, and I wouldn't even have to add any brush around with a zip strip like we did on the other one. We already got a hole neck down right there. So little couple pointers on snaring. I hope you learned something and I hope you at least try it out because coon snaring is it's as easy as it gets, it's as cheap as it gets, and it's as fun as it gets. I can check these snares from 10 mile an hour out of the truck. Uh, they're both there. Or up there's a coon in there, and there's our there's a prize, Mr. Coon. So thanks for watching. I appreciate your commentary when you uh, when you uh, watch the video. Give me some grief. Tell me how big of a goober I am doing this. It's all in fun. Thanks again. All right, folks. Got the second snare all set up. You can see the trail coming through there. We got some sticks. And I can't even see it in the video. You really got to blend in. There ain't no coon that's going to be meandering around this trail. Going to pay no attention to that. I mean, you, you can't. I got it zoomed in all the way. And I can even, if you don't mind me shaking here, I can get down on the ground to a coon's level. And I feel like an idiot doing this. People are probably thinking, whoa. I mean, where is it? You really got to look to find that snare when you do as good a job as that camoing it in. Might seem overkill for some, but another nice thing about putting that brush on top is uh, if a fox comes, there's a better chance of him ducking because that's probably 14 inches off the ground at least. He'll duck underneath that brush and go through the snare instead of jumping over the top of it. So just another picture or video showing you what I am talking about and how I do my coon snaring. So thank you very much. All right, folks, we're back on this creek, same place where we just got done talking about snaring coons. Just wanted to take a second about talk to you about blind sets along the creek. If you look real close right there, that's a, that's a bank that's all muddy. That's from coons walking up and down it. So we would position a blind set right there, and then that animal is going to walk around the bank and we're going to find a vertical structure and a point and that would probably be right around here right along that trash that's going to push that animal out into the deeper water you'd bet about you bet your trap about four inches off that <clears throat> and then that animal is going to walk up here and you can see if I get back here this animal is going to walk along the creek and then you'll see this trail right here. If you can see it well or any footprints, I can't tell this video camera thing so small. This is my first time playing with it. These animals, you can see all this mud. The only thing that brings mud up is critters and the critters are coon. And we're just going to keep following this track around here and hopefully you can see it the coon trail that goes up and along there so we'd put a blind set <clears throat> right there where the coons come up the bank crawling up the bank we could put a snare right there at the top where the coons coming out of the bank or we could bet a foothold there and then there's another one right here you can see, I mean, you can even see coon tracks in there. Coons walk up the bank. This discoloration on this grass, that was mud from that creek on the coons' paws coming up to here to get the grass dirty. 
I mean, we can look around all over the place. It's all nice and clean grass. So the only reason this grass is getting dirty is because the coons are coming out of the creek and dragging the mud up with them. That's just a little pointer on blind sets along creeks <coughs> where you can use them. Um, next year, besides dog proof traps, I am not going to use any bait. I'm, I'm doing it for myself just to prove you don't need bait for coons. So. With that being said, that's another little tip on blind sets I wanted to share with you, so thank you.